Hi, I'm Nick van der Kriek from Building Point Australia and welcome to this Ideostatica presentation on a heavy column base plate where I'll illustrate the use of the contact operation to transmit compression via bearing. Here's the model I've set up to show the options and what we have is a 400WC361 grade 300. That's the heaviest 400WC commonly available in Australia. I also have a fairly substantial base plate of 60 millimetre thickness and plate grade 350. And the anchors are M30 grade 8.8 .8, and the concrete block is 32 MPA. And the design section capacity in compression for this column is 11,600 kilonewtons and for an effective length of about 4.5 metres, the design member capacity is about 10,000 kilonewtons, and that's considering buckling about the minor axis or the YY axis. So I've applied 10,000 kilonewtons, and I've also applied a shear force of 150 kilonewtons in that direction. And we can confirm the direction of the loading by turning on the local coordinate system and make sure we've got loads in the right sense and in, with the right sign as well. So initially I've set this connection up with an 8mm leg fillet weld to both the flanges and the web and I don't expect those fillet welds to be satisfactory. Here we see it in the base plate operation for both flanges and webs, we've got a double-sided fillet weld of an 8mm leg size. And I hover over that and I see the details on the bottom left as well. So uh, when we have the geometry details for the connection set up and also the loading, we can simply press calculate and then we review the results. And we see the program iterating through a range of different load levels. There could be elastic, plastic or other non-linear behaviours to take into account. So there is a degree of iteration typically in the analysis. And what we see is a summary on the top left here. So all of the loading was applied. That's analysis 100%. Plate plastic strain has not exceeded the design limit of 5%. We've got 4.2% somewhere. We can analyse the connection scrutinise it by going to the check menu and uh, see where that is occurring. Anchors are at about 97%. Utilisations are working fairly hard. Uh, we see a few of them orange here, and that is possibly because of shear uh, pushing to the side uh, of the concrete block without any reinforcing considered. The concrete block itself in terms of bearing stress is working at about 70%, but of course, welds are clearly failing at that small size and they have a, a very large utilisation ratio. Uh, we can go to the check menu to examine in further detail some of these results. We're on the overall check view. We can go to the equivalent stress or the Von Mies uh, stress view and we can look at the deformed geometry of different scales. I'll reduce that a little bit. We see because of perhaps very large plastic strains in the welds, there we see it, uh, nearly 400% here, and therefore we have a large vertical displacement downwards of the column with respect to the welded connection there. And uh, I don't have a contact operation in place as yet. so. The direct bearing of this column onto the base plate is not considered uh, at this stage. And there are implications for fabrication, of course. A cold saw cut to a suitably flat plate will typically achieve the requirements from AS4100 and other codes such that direct bearing can occur. But if I don't want to ask the fabricator to do that, if I want to specify the worlds that will completely convey these design forces, then at this stage, I might simply increase the fillet weld size. And there's a few options, whether you're in the check menu or the design menu, you can right click on a weld and uh, change it here, up or down or right over it. Or I could 
select the appropriate operation or the appropriate weld and change the details here. And so what I'll try is 20 millimetres leg length. And of course we have some fairly big welds now shown in the connection. And if I wanted to check this connection for fillet welds with a 20 millimetre leg length, it might not be I actually want to specify that option in the design. It could be that I have an incomplete penetration butt weld with the equivalent design throat thickness as this fillet weld, or I might want to have a fillet weld reinforcing on top of an incomplete penetration butt weld, in other words, a compound weld with a design throat thickness equivalent to the design throat thickness of this fillet weld. The five factors are the same for these welding options. So this is a way of checking that type of compound weld, if you like. So with that larger weld size, again, we just press calculate and we can examine the results. And clearly the welds still fail, but we're a lot closer. We're about 34% over the design limit here. And uh, just like before, we could go back and to the check menu, select the weld. It will take us to the weld tab and highlight the weld I've selected. And we see the detail here. We have a 20 millimeter leg fillet weld with a design throat thickness of 14 millimeters or so. Uh, each side, so a total of about 28 millimetres for 40 millimetre thick plates. And we have the design shear flow, the design capacity and the utilisation factor here. So I could increase this fillet weld leg size again, of course. Another possibility could be to utilise butt welds here. So for the flanges, I could use a butt weld like that and maybe have a uh, incomplete penetration butt weld to the web and simulate it in the software with a fillet weld of appropriate leg size. Or I could also do a butt weld here. And by the way, a handy way to check that we have welds, fillet welds are easy to see, butt welds less so. But in the transparent view, we see these yellow rectangles joining the mid thicknesses of plates that are joined by either butt welds or fillet welds. So that's a very handy view mode to go into. So I'll check this now though with butt welds to both flanges and web. And I expect this to work. In fact, when you select butt welds in Ideostatica, we don't have an incomplete penetration butt weld option. That's why I mentioned the use of a fillet weld for equivalent design throat thickness. So butt welds, are not specifically checked but if we have a problem in the plates locally adjacent to butt welds this will show up in excessive plastic strain of plates but this connection now passes all the checks but if we look at the results now we don't get checks of welds because they're butt welds we can still get checks of all the other items for example the stress view the plastic strain limited to five percent there and we're up to 0.8 percent somewhere with plates and it's uh, the column flange and we can also look at the stress in concrete like this and also uh, look at some results for the concrete block like this so we have all the other results available of course but not for welds so i'll go back and change these welds a little bit Let's go back to fillet welds and I want to use a much more modest or cost effective size, if possible, eight millimeters. But of course, I'm going to use a contact operation to take most of the compression. And in many cases in Idea Statica, contacts are automatically defined. We don't have to do anything special. So for example, if you have an end plate bolted to a column in a connection, there will be an automatic contact there. We don't have to specify a contact between bolted elements. And if you put a doubler plate on another plate or a member, there will be a contact there. And there's a range of uh, situations where it's automatic. But in a case like this, where this column has been cut as part of a base plate operation to the service of the base plate, there is not a contact automatically specified there. You know, it might well be that you're intending to utilise welds to carry that those forces. But for large forces, uh, it may be more economical, of course, particularly if you have predominantly compression, to convey the force via 
direct bearing and the steel code gives you rules about how this will be achieved. Okay, so what we need to do is add a contact operation and we can find contacts in two areas. If you have plate to plate contacts, plates that could be bolted together, you select the bolt grid operation and you could also change that bolt grid to an anchor grid and also a contact option. And similarly for the end of members, either to a, a plate or a, an element such as a, a column flange, as shown by the icon here, uh, or end to end. So where plates are welded end to end. This is where we could have a weld, but we could also have a contact of that type. And so I'll select that option because that's what we want. And I want to specify a contact between the end of the column, both flanges and the web, and the base plate, of course. And so what we have is an edge to surface situation by default. If it is two plates edge to edge or flanges, but welded to together, for example, select edge to edge. But we want an edge to surface contact and it's not a weld. We select contact from the drop down, and the first item needs to be the column member. So this is the plate icon. We need to specify a member and there could be a number of members, but uh, there's only one here. So I'm going to make uh, it the column, of course. And the second item as part of this, this contact operation is the base plate. So select the plate operation here, and there's only one plate in this connection. So the contact operation has been specified now. And the transparent view, just like with checking welds, we go to the transparent view and contacts that have been specially added are shown in red. And so we can see across the flanges and the web, or under those items at least, we have both a weld operation and a contact operation. And prior to Idostatica 2022, we weren't able to have uh, these two operations in the same location. There would be an error generated during uh, your attempt to calculate, saying that essentially we couldn't have duplicate items, but we can do this now. So that's a very nice advance, and it means we can convey the bearing stresses via contact. And let's just go back and have a look at the loading effects. AS4100 requires in Section 9 that if we do have a, a compression connection like this and we want to transmit the forces via direct bearing, then we need to have connection elements such as the welded elements and so on, which can support at least 15% of the section capacity uh, of the incoming members or the member capacity. And the full section capacity is 11,600 kilonewtons and 15% of that is 1,740 kilonewtons. So what I could do just to make sure I check the welds for the appropriate level of force is uh, I could add a load case from the ribbon or copy this one here. And in this case, I want to check the welds for the right level of design force. So 15% of this section capacity. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'll first of all, zero out the shear and not be concerned of that with this second load case, which I want to, for clarity, rename and call it minimum design action. And this, as I say, is specifically intended to be calculated for just the weld. So this I should name uh, in the same way for clarity so that I know that that is a contact operation. So in order to check the welds, First of all, I'm going to untick the contact operation. It's still there. I can tick it back on, of course, and I'm going to untick the first load combination and only run the welds for this second combination. And I want to make it 740 kilonewtons. I could, of course, just type that in there, negative 1740. Uh, but a handy little option is to specify the percentage member capacity that uh, of the incoming member. So by switching the load percentage option on in the ribbon and then entering percentage values, 
it's actually going to attempt to determine the appropriate ratio that I've used. So uh, if I use uh, 100%, that is estimating the design capacity entirely of the cross section. And so, of course, minus 15 is downwards force of 15% of the section capacity, the 1740 that I mentioned. I, I could toggle that off. And uh, I see it made a fairly accurate uh, estimate of that, but I'll just overwrite that with 1740. So now with no contact, the transparent view doesn't show the red and I've only got the minimum design action. I'm going to run this to see how my welds go with this minimum requirement and everything is fine and I could go to the check menu and review these details. Uh, and now, of course, I want to turn the contact back on and run the, uh, the main load case with 10,000 kilonewtons and shear and you might have moments and, uh, and other things as well. We could untick this minimum design action. We've, we've got the contact in play now, but it'll just, it won't work hard, of course. It uh, is, uh, will easily satisfy that one, so I'll, I'll leave it turned on. So let's try this now. And happily, it's working and welds are working fairly hard. And we can have a look at the reason for this. If I look at uh, equivalent stress, perhaps with a bit of displacement, we can see because of the elasticity of the concrete and the curvature of the plate, we've got some concentration of stress on the outer toes of the flange and the welds correspondingly have a higher design shear flow there. So if we select the weld, the program shows us the weld distribution across the length of the weld. It shows here in orange the weld that I'm referring to. And it shows us the design shear flow, 1.33 kilonewtons per millimetre and it's very close to the design shear capacity working at uh, just under 100%. And the shear will be taken by these welds, predominantly being carried by the web, but uh, because of the elasticity of the column and uh, the base plate and the concrete to an extent, there is still a degree of shear flow generated in the welds in addition to that which would be developed because of the design shear force. But we can see here that much smaller welds are acceptable in this design uh, when we have utilised bearing capacity between the plate and the column end. Thank you very much.